Great to be here. My colleague Tom was here in, in May in Reggio Emilia. Um, we're tag teaming on uh, attending this network and we're really excited to establish uh, contacts across Europe. I live in Budapest, um, but I'm actually from Australia originally. Soil Tissue Foundation is based in the UK. <laughs> Complicated. Yeah, thanks. So, um, who is the Soil Tissue Foundation? We're just a small, not for profit company. Uh, we advocate for real democracy. That's what we, our tagline is. Um, but actually, we've found ourselves uh, in this kind of niche expertise of how to uh, recruit and select representative samples of people for deliberative mini publics. Um, we've selected for about 120 deliberative mini publics in the last sort of four years or so, and it just keeps going uh, up and up. Yeah, thanks. Oh, uh, sorry, go back one. <laughs> uh, the, that's just a sample of one of the, no, back, back, sorry, yeah. That's just the example of one of the sort of invites that we'd send out. It was for a um, citizen's jury on the Isle of Jersey on assisted dying. This was before um, President Macron launched a, a similar national citizen's assembly on assisted dying in, in France. Um, we got a great response rate for that and it proved to us that the topic is really key. If you can have an exciting topic, people will come and, and have, be happy to chat. Um, converse to that if the topic's a bit not inspiring, we, we often get really poor response rates. So that's something we also investigate. Thanks. I just love throwing this one in here. You know, Sortition does go back to ancient Athens. People probably know this in this space. They had this machine that you can, this device you can go and see in the museum in, uh, in Athens called the Clerateria, where people would put their names and they'd randomly select people to populate the various juries and assemblies that existed around the, the Agora in ancient Athens. Not that we want to replicate ancient Athens, of course, where those slavery women were excluded, you know, citizens that weren't Athenian were excluded, etc. But it does go back a long way. You can find quotes from like Aristotle saying that democracy means random selection and election is actually an oligarchic device. And, you know, um, I'll have to throw that out there to sort of challenge people. <laughs> Next one, thanks. I think you all know this, of course, uh, what's the Citizens Assembly, how they work. We focus on how do you get that sort of representative bunch of people and what does it mean to be broadly representative to bring those people together. Um, I like emphasising that what comes out of this is not public opinion, it, it's public judgement, it's something different, it's like a jury, it's what you get once the people go through this informed delivery process. Of course, I assume you all know that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So when we uh, do recruitment for this sort of uh, civic lottery, for this uh, WMD mini publics, we almost always follow a two-step process. I'll just briefly go through those two steps. Again, I'm sure you probably all know this, but um, just to let you know how we think about this. The first step is you randomly select a bunch of people and send them invitations. And so the question, of course, is where do you randomly select those bunch of people from and how do you send those invitations? And there's very differing ways all across the EU as far as we've seen. Um, so in some countries, the government will get access to the resident register, will randomly select people from that resident register and send invitations. In the UK, there's no such thing as a residence register, so we just use the postal database and we randomly select from the postal database and send uh, letters to households that just says, Whoever lives in this household can register. In France, in the, the Citizens' Convention there, they use random phone dialing apparently, and they just called hundreds of tens of thousands of phone numbers until people replied and enough people replied. Um, what else in person uh, has happened in, in Irish assemblies and in the first Scottish Citizens' Assembly, they just selected addresses and went and knocked on their door. Uh, it's also happening uh, here in Germany in various places. So once you have made this decision about what the database is, how or what, you, who you can get access to, how you can send those invitations, you get people who respond. Those people who respond are typically always skewed uh, in terms of education, in terms of socioeconomic status, etc. So next one, thanks. Ah, I was going to just bring, yeah, that's fine, this is good. Um, this was a project we worked on before COP26, which was, you know, it's very far from local. Uh, a group of organisations said, hey, let's try to do a global citizens' assembly. So when we did the, the point selection, we just found a database that is a population-weighted global population database. We chose 100 points weighted by population. Of course, 15 of those are in India and 16 or 17 are in China. Um, and then we tried to find community organisations near each of those points and ask them to recruit 
four to six people. So we had our pool of people to then draw a, a representative sample from uh, whatever that means. Next, thanks. Closer to here, we're currently working with Nexus on the German National Citizens Assembly. Um, the, the, the way they've done it, because the residence registers in Germany are municip at municipality level, the first thing you have to actually do is randomly select the municipalities. That was done based on state population. It was done to make sure that there were small, medium and large municipalities in there. Then they've got a right to every municipality and say, please randomly select so, so a certain number of um, names and addresses. They'll be sending 20,000 invitations out to those people randomly selected from all across Germany. And again, we'll see what the response rate is and then we'll do what is now going to be the second step, which is you've chosen your, your people to invite. Some of those people have responded. They're skewing in your invitations. We then do a second random selection to try to correct that skewing and make it broadly representative. What does broadly representative mean? Typically, it of course means age brackets, so we make sure there's you know, lots of young people or proportional to the, the population of young people. Gender, of course, uh, geography, fairly easy, make sure that there's a certain number of people from the, the certain regions. And then some sort of socioeconomic proxy. This varies from project to project and from people to people. Um, the German national one will use education level. It's quite common to use education level. We have used occupation. We have asked once what people's household income was. We don't recommend it. Um, in the UK, we also have, um, there's government statistics on which regions of the UK are more deprived and less deprived. And so you can also just sort of get a socioeconomic proxy by just making sure that you select enough people from the more deprived areas. Um, again, there's problems with that. And it's, uh, again, there's problems with all of this. And, you know, we have long and interminable debates about what's more fair, what's less fair, looking at the intersectionalities of these um, uh, groups, etc. Other things we have used is urban rural ethnicity in the UK is a, is a census question, but in France, for example, you, it's illegal to ask people's ethnicity, so you know, it, it, differs, it differs from country to country. We have asked uh, disability. It's very common to put in an attitudinal question about, uh, if, for example, if it's a climate assembly, we ask people what their attitude towards climate change is because we want to make sure that we can respond to the question, is that assembly only full of people who care about climate change? We can say no, actually there's also people who have told us that they don't think climate change is a big problem. Um, of course, there's lots of other questions around that. Uh, yes, thanks. So this is an example, um, and we've worked with some academics in the US from Harvard and Carnegie Mellon University uh, on a, making an algorithm that selects people from a pool of respondents that match the target as fairly as possible. We were super surprised when Nature said, yeah, we'll publish that, um, but also very proud, of course. And so this is uh, an example here. Is This is the Jersey uh, citizens, the citizens' jury it was. On the left column is our targets. On the right column is the respondents. So you can see then when talking about the sister dying, we had this really strong skewing. You can't read that, but that's actually um, females read there. So far more women responded to the invitation than men, um, but we want a broadly representative sample, so we sort of correct that skewing there. Again, this number of categories and how you define that is always a kind of political discussion and is always what, how the, the, the people will define what is broadly representative. In Germany, here for the National Assembly, it's age, gender, geography, um, education level, and there's going to be one attitudinal question because it's an assembly on nutrition about food, about food preferences. Um, yep, thanks. There's uh, starting to be a bit of a demand for actually showing some kind of physical lottery. Um, I know this is very common in Poland, for example, um, where Marx and Goebbels is, is very keen on having this physical lottery. So what we're doing now is that instead of just selecting one assembly out of this group of people, we're generating N, could be a thousand assemblies, and then choosing numbers out of a hat or, or getting balls out of a container and saying, okay, assembly 473 is the final assembly. Just to add some kind of excitement, people can watch that and go, oh, that's me, I'm on that assembly, you know. Um, we'll see how that goes. We, we're using this in a few weeks in Switzerland for a youth assembly. Uh, and then the German uh, government wants a physical lottery as well. 
But what's after this? Uh, our mission is actually to make citizens' assemblies and such permanent, and so we're really happy to see that there's this uh, institutionalisation is taking off. In Ostbelgium, the German-speaking part of Belgium, they set up a, a permanent citizens' council. The city of Paris has done the same. Um, I think I've heard about one in Copenhagen, also one in Brussels at the city level. Um, of course, most of the projects we work on are all at city level. Uh, probably 90, 95% of our projects are city level. It's of course the, the big national ones that we sort of promote because they get more publicity, um, but of course there's more city councils. In the UK, uh, we're currently launching a, a campaign to replace the House of Lords with a, with a, a citizen, permanent citizens assembly. We'll see how that goes, but the, the, gov the opposition leader has promised or has said multiple times he is willing to abolish the House of Lords, but hasn't said what he wants to replace it with, and he's far ahead in the polls, so we're hoping that we can um, work around that to generate some sort of public demand for this kind of um, institutionalization at such a high level. Thanks.